This is Steve Emsley and this is the second of a series of videos on the history of the North Sea area during the Heroic Age or in the early 1900s when Robert Falcon Scott came south to conquer the South Pole. I'm now on Inexpressible Island and as I turn the camera I will show you what's known as Hell's Gate where glaciers converge and always bring cold winds sometimes gale force winds down over this island. It was named inexpressible by Scott's Northern Party, a group of men that he sent out starting from Cape Adair to explore the geology of the coastline. And they were dropped here at Hell's Gate Moraine, which you can see in the distance there on those mounds out there on the glacier. They were dropped there by the ship, the Terra Nova, in January 1912 and they were supposed to be picked up there in February 1912. However, the ship never arrived. It was forced back from the ice and the men, six men that were placed here had to spend the winter on Inexpressible Island. Next I will show you the snow cave area where they dug into a drift to escape the fierce winds that lasted here all winter. They spent nine months without a change of clothes, without a bath, living in a snow cave on this island until finally in September of 1912 they were able to leave the snow cave and head down towards the uh, Cape Evans where Scott's remaining party was located. Scott by then had perished on his way back from the pole. That's a whole nother story. But they were met by men still with Scott's group that were uh, living in one of the huts down the coast. So let's explore some of this island and as I stand up you'll note that we are here on a typical windy day. Not too bad for inexpressible standards. Probably about 25-30 uh, knot wind. in this drift behind me. It's now marked by a sign that protects the site by the New Zealand Antarctic Heritage Trust. And remains of their snow cave, of course, are long gone. But on the ground, around the sign there, and over here, you can see remains of their food. Seals, seal blubber, penguin bones, mainly emperor and a deli penguin that are found here still among the rocks still left from over a hundred years ago when they were here surviving that long cold winter in a cave right there there's a sign here that also marks this spot very difficult to read now but it gives the names of the men and marks again the site of this snow cave. They built it big enough into this drift so that all six of them could lie in there out of the wind, protected from the wind, and spend many days and nights in there trying to survive and feeding only on one biscuit per man per day and occasional blubber, seal blubber, and penguin meat. Down below the cave is Sea View Bay. You can see some seals out there on the ice now. That's what they would go after in the time they saw them. One time they were lucky enough to kill a seal that had fresh fish in its stomach, so they were able to have a fish dinner. But that was the only time. We'll go down to the beach next so that you can see some more interesting things left by this group here in 1912. We're now on Sea View Beach. seaweed in the foreground. There are metal seals out on the ice. There's those seals that they were hoping to catch and kill and store for their food throughout the winter. They also use this seaweed for their beds in the uh, snow cave or the part of the floor with their sleeping bags on top. 
here on the beach is a stack of cut seal skins and you can see a slit right here that they made as a handle in pulling back the skin and taking the blubber. In his book that he published in 1915, after they finally got out of here, Raymond Priestley, the geologist, mentioned that one day they were at the tide line on the beach and there they were retrieving four sections of seal blubber that they had cached here when they saw a live seal and ran off after it. I like to think that these might be those pieces of seal blubber they abandoned when they went after the live one. We'll never know for sure, but it's fun to think that this might actually be those pieces that they were looking at. Okay, now we have arrived at one of the interesting features about this beach. Scattered about are these mummies of seals. This is an elephant seal, the southern elephant seal. These animals must have come here after breeding for their molt. And some of them died on the beach. This one is over a thousand years old. The northern party found these mummies on the beach. They mentioned it in their journal. So in 1912, they were already here. They also found that these old porous bones on the carcasses were useful for soaking up oil in their blubber lamps, reducing the amount of smoke in the flame. So they frequently came down here and broke away some of these bones to use in their oil lamp. They broke away all the ribs. You see no ribs left here on this animal. The wind has eroded the rest and the skin off, but it's solid skin from mummification over centuries. And there's at least nine of these animals scattered about this beach and one more beach farther to the south. All of them, most of them, appear to be males and subadult males. The northern party thought they were Weddell seals, but when you examine their teeth and the size of the animals, you can tell for certain that they are elephant seals. You can see the hill there where the snow cave is located, the snow drift. And it was because they spent that winter here so hungry and so cold, such fierce winds, that they named this place Inexpressible Island. Though today, to me, it's inexpressible in another way by its history, its wildlife, and its stark beauty. I think it's inexpressible in that way as well. So that concludes this tour of inexpressible.